So, I live in Minnesota, and if there's one thing that you need to know about Minnesotans, it's that they like their beer. I knew it was only a matter of time before someone was going to ask me to make this. What is this, you ask? It is a beer bottle cap holder. When you drink a lot of beer, you're going to have lots of bottle caps. This helps you display them. I'm going to show you how to make them and make money doing it. Let's rock. So before I make the bottle cap holder, uh, it's going to be for the state of Minnesota. That's what my client wants. So I could sit there and I can go into VCarve Pro and I could make a whole file. But you know what I found? A lot of times you can go right on Etsy and for a couple dollars you can find SVG laser cut files, anything like that. where. You, they're already pre-done and they only cost four or five bucks typically. Um, so I did a little research. I did see that there are some, so I'm gonna show you what I'm, what I'm gonna do. Um, we'll go through it step by step and try and make this as simple as possible. I'll try to save as much time. I wanna make this for a client quick, so that's what I'm gonna do. I, if I sat and went on V-Carve and tried to make this, I'd have to figure out the size of a bottle cap, what size is gonna make it fit. Well, somebody's probably already done all that work for me. It's gonna save me some time. So let's, uh, let's switch into that here and we'll see what we can find. All right, so as you can see here, I went to Etsy and here's what I found. I'm gonna click on this. This is a Minnesota bottle cap, beer cap holder. It's got a few different files, DXF, SVG, um, of course, whatever else they want to put in the title to try and sell it. But I click over here and you can see it it already has the little tabs mixed in right there. Um, it's made for laser cut, but we can just adapt it for a vector pretty easy. And it shows the dimensions were 22 by 19, 22 and a half, and 22 by 20 really. So I'm just going to go ahead and buy this now. Check out. Make life simple. Okay. So I've submitted my order and it's right there on the Etsy page and it shows view your digital files now. I can click on that and you can go right here to download. It's gonna download it right to my computer. Hit download. And I'm just gonna to go to my drive here and we're just gonna make a new folder. We're gonna call it uh, MN. MN cap holder. That should work. Uh, create that new file. And I'm going to save it right there. And you can see here it's all done. It's already downloaded. So we'll end up getting out of this and I'll see you in Vector Pro in a minute. Okay, so here we are. We're in the Vectric. We are in the VCarve Pro. Um, you can't do a lot of 3D things here. You can do a little bit. When you get to Aspire, that's where a lot of fun happens, but I know that gets a little expensive, so I try to keep it in the VCarve Pro, or we can do this on um, VCarve Desktop. You can do all this on there. Um, in future videos, I'll show you some 3D, cool 3D things you can do with VCarve Pro. Again, it's gonna involve going to Etsy and saving yourself some time. So what we're gonna do now, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to create a new file. And we already talked about that being uh, 24 or 22 inches by 19 inches. I'm just going to keep it simple. I'm going to just create a 24 by 24 uh, inch piece. And then for the thickness, I mean, it's not going to be very thick. It's probably going to be half an inch thick. I don't want it too heavy. They're going to hang it on the wall, I'm sure. Um, the deeper it is, the longer your cut's going to take. So I'm just going to do half an inch. And if I change my mind, I can always change that, that part later. Not a big deal. And I'm just gonna hit okay so it creates it. And there we go, there's our piece. Now here's where the fun starts. I'm gonna go import vectors. And I am gonna go to that document. And we call that, what, Minnesota cap holder. Well, of course it's not there. Let me go unzip it and then I'll be back. Okay, I'm back and zip the files. Should make it a little easier for us. Uh, all right, yeah, anytime you buy files from Etsy, 
a lot of times they're going to be in a zip folder they're going to have especially this one because there were so many different files that came with it so um, I'm going to go right up here to this spot and you can see the little window pops up it says import vectors so we're going to click on that so we can import some vectors and we're going to go right to where here's our Minnesota cap folder we're in that we're going to click on the contents there are all these different files you can pick from and they're all going to be okay they're they all have their purpose um, I wouldn't use a PDF or anything like that I like to use SVG files typically so we're going to go right to the SVG file and use that and I, I don't know why there's three different files I have no idea they're all about the same size I don't think anything's going to matter I'm just going to pick the first one and we're going to rock with it all right and there it is now I click on it, it's going to click on each individual one of these. Now, this is all we have to do. We're, we're all done with the drawing step. The drawing step is right up here. We're done with that. So now we can go right into creating tool paths. You can see how fast this works. I mean, everything's set up for the right size because we cut it out, set our, uh, set our sample size to fit the dimensions of what we, what we downloaded on Etsy. You can see how easy this is getting, right? This is really easy. So now we're gonna go up here, we're gonna click on this. This is gonna pin everything over to the tool path side. Cause we want all the tool paths over here. I'm gonna move myself over to the opposite side here so I'm not in our way. Now, I'm gonna show you just a fun trick here cause we're gonna start creating tool paths. I wanna create all the little circles in here. I don't want the outside of the Minnesota. So if you do this and you hold down um, shift and you can click on that vector on the outside it gets rid of it it's gone so any tool path we use here and what I'm really gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and group these circles they're all in the same group so you can right click on the mouse you can scroll down to group objects I just grouped them and here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna create a new layer so I right clicked on the mouse just anywhere on the screen I'm gonna put um, move to new layer I'm gonna create a new layer and we're just gonna call it cap holes sounds dirty all right cap holes that layer is created now I'm gonna go on the outside and I'm gonna create a new layer for this too. move to layer new layer we're just gonna call this MN and uh, outline so we know that's the state outline there we go. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and create the outline. I'm going to want this to cut everything out. So we'll go up here and we'll go right to, um, well first we're going to hit set. We're just going to make sure everything's alright the way we want it. You know, there's the thickness of your material. The date I'm set for the middle, I don't want it in the middle because I'm going to measure everything off of this corner right here on my CNC machine when I set it up. So I like to put that right on the corner there. Um, all the materials good, thickness, all the gaps are set from what I've used before. You can set these up for your machine. It's going to be different for everybody on what you want. I just use these and I've used these. I don't usually change it at all. So I'm going to click OK there. And now, since we're doing the profile, we're going to cut out Minnesota. We're going to go to this spot right here. And this one, when it pops up, it shows you it's a profile tool path. We're going to click on that. Our start depth is zero, that's where we're the top layer of our material. And our cut depth, well we are half an inch material that we're using now. So I'm just gonna make that a, uh, we're just gonna call it 0 .505. That way it cuts through the material enough. Uh, next thing we wanna do is we wanna select our bit. And I'm just gonna use a quarter inch. This brings up all my bits. So I'm just gonna use a quarter inch end mill. We're just gonna cut right through it. I have a Onefinity CNC machine. Those things are great. They cut fast. They cut deep. They cut well. So um, I'm going to select that. I'm going to edit this really quick because I know I'm going to be cutting this out of pine because they wanted it out of pine. They wanted a little more rustic looking. And uh, you can rip through pine a little faster with that machine. So I'm just going to bump it up to 90 inches per minute. This is just, uh, it shows all the specs for this specific job when you hit edit. You can change them. I'm going to leave it right there at that. I don't think I need to do anything else. Um, I want to cut on the outside of this line. You can cut outside, on, or inside. If we cut inside, we're definitely going to bump into all these little cap holes. So I want to go on the outside, 
keep it all outside. Um, I don't need to do a separate pass. I do want to add some tabs, so I don't want to glue this big piece, this big of a piece down with blue tape. I'm actually going to clamp it down. There's plenty of room here to add some clamps. And uh, so my clamps uh, are my, I'm going to add tabs. You can see I'm right here. I, mean, I clicked on that to add some tabs. A quarter inch long is fine. Thickness, I'll probably do 0.125. That should be enough. Now we can do edit tabs. And really, I, if we have about six or seven tabs, I'll just do eight. We have eight tabs. We can add them in. We, we want to have right here, we want to have them avoid corners and curve spots. It can be a little hard on this map, but uh, we'll make it work. Add tabs. So I'll go through and just, if you hold your mouse over these, you can move them around. So like this one's really close to a corner. I can slide it over a little bit so it's on a flat spot. You know, this one can go up here, it's kind of flat there. This one I don't want it right by a corner, so I'll scoot it up. Scoot this one over to the middle. And this is a really bad spot for anything here. I'm just gonna move this one down here too, and we'll spread these out. Slide that over. I'll go up here, there's a nice flat spot there. This one, yes. We'll just put it here, try and put it in between these two, keep it kind of safe. I'm going to slide this one up a little bit. I think that should be good. And so we'll go and we'll just hit close here because we got them on. And I do want to add a ramp. I do want to ramp my bit into a, to it a bit. What that means is the, the bit will go back and forth as it slides down into the wood and that uh, that helps a lot it does it, it helps prevents burn and it just reduces some of the stress on your machine and on the bit uh, so I'll do that a little bit I, I have it at four inches yeah, that's a long ways but this is a big project I don't think four inches will hurt anything you can see right up here this little blue dot right there that's where your cutting's going to start I don't I don't know whether it's going to go up or down. That's where we're going to go. Yeah, it'll end up going up first. So, I mean, it's got to make these curves as it digs in. I think we can... I think if we did like a two inch, that'll be good. I'm just going to roll with it. All right, just for fun anyway, right? All right, so client won't mind if it damages anything that I own, as long as they get their project. All right, so um, we don't have to worry about uh, projecting the tool path onto a 3D model, we're not doing any 3D here, but we do need to name this, so I'm just going to call it uh, Minnesota, and we'll just call it the cutout. And what, one, one thing that I really like to do, I like to put what bit I used on here. Right, so whatever bit I'm gonna put in my sheet machine, I put it in the title because when you load it up in the Infinity machine, it only gives you the title. There's no other information to tell you what bit you're using. So I'm just going to put Minnesota cutout. I know this is a quarter inch end mill. So I'm gonna put quarter inch end mill. I, most of the time I use an up cut. If I need to use a down cut, I will specifically put in there I'm using a down cut or a compression bit. And if you don't know what those are, we can talk about that at a different time. That's a whole nother, whole nother video. But right now we're just talking about uh, building this. So we'll call it the Minnesota cutout quarter inch end mill. And that's saved right there. So we'll hit, uh, next thing we do is right here, I'm right down here. I'll hit calculate. And this is a warning that tells me I'm going to cut through the material. Well, duh, this is my outline. I'm cutting through the whole thing. So we'll put OK. And this, it brings us to this screen right here. Well, here's what we got to do. We're going to go preview all tool paths. Because it's what the tool path is. And it can see there, it cut all the way through the material. It's showing us our little, little tabs in these spots here. And if I didn't have tabs, I could click on the outside here. I don't know if you know about this about uh, Vectric software, but if you didn't have the tabs in there, you can click on the outside software. It'll remove the excess cutout and just leave the middle. But uh, because we have tabs, it stays connected, which is fine. We'll deal with that. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go up to the corner here, back up to the 2D on the upper left corner. We're going to go back to that. And now we need to create another toolpath. We need to do, 
I'm gonna hit close there. We need to do a tool path for all these circles. And I want these to go all the way through, but it, there's a little detail in these. If I scroll in, you can see we have this curve right here, but then we come to this bump. And I could use a quarter inch end mill, but I don't think that's gonna get in there too well and make this, make this nice. I'm gonna end up sanding everything when we're done. But I think if we, I think if we used an eighth inch end mill, that might do all right. Now I may be shooting myself in the foot. We may be doing this again with a sixteenth inch, but I think we'll I think we'll be okay with a with the eighth inch. We'll give it a shot. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be enough to make a bit of a round over to hold the cap in place. So let's give it a shot. We'll see what happens. Worst case scenario, we have to try it again. It's going to be out of pine. It's not like it's walnut or anything horrible. Granted, after the coronavirus it's a little more expensive for lumber right now but uh, two foot by two foot well, we're just gonna give it a shot and see what happens all right so we're going let me scroll back out here so you can kind of see what we got going on all right so they're all highlighted if you remember I grouped them so it's all highlighted now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a pocket tool path because in a pocket tool path we're just we just want to cut the hole out inside of here so we're gonna go to pocket tool path and the cut depth well we want to go all the way through this whole project boy whether we put tabs in here that's that's something to consider I think we're gonna have to end up doing at least one tab on each of these they'll be fun to cut out alright so um, we're just gonna go to we're gonna go to point five one. I just wanna make sure we get all the way through I don't wanna mess with not cutting all the way through if the board is a little bit warped because it's pine then you know what we're gonna do 0. 0.512 that should get us all the way through if I cut into my sacrificial bottom I don't care it'll be okay it's not very deep and then what we need to do is we need to click on the uh, bit right here because right now it's set for a quarter inch down cut bit and that's not what we want so we're gonna go ahead and remove that we're gonna click here and select and I know I have an eighth inch end mill in here. There it is. I'm right on my eighth inch end mill. And we're going to go ahead and just select that one. Now again, I'm going to highlight it here. And I'm going to go over to edit. We're cutting through pine. I know it's a little thinner bit. I'm just going to do 85. Just to have it cut through a little faster. Do OK. Right here. It's going to take nine passes to get through everything. This might take a while that's all right and we have our offset set we want it to go around and around in there get rid of that hole and then uh, let's see don't need to do any pocket allowance um, we can ramp it in a little bit I don't think we're gonna ramp it in we're gonna skip on that one and then we'll go down here and we'll rename it and we'll call this cap holes and we're going to do it with a 1 8th end mill and here I would tend to, I would I would not use a down cut bit in here I would use an up cut we want to pull that sawdust out and, and those chips we want to get rid of those you push down it's just going to make a mess so um, let's go ahead and calculate and see what happens yes here comes our warning again you're going to cut through your project I know thank you and we're good there so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna do um, right now I'm just clicked on right down here I'm on cap holes I just want to see that one so I'm gonna hit reset preview and I'm just gonna do preview selected tool pass I just want to see what happens with this tool path and look cuts them all out it clears all that out so we didn't have to make any tabs this is just gonna be easier for me we could make tabs and have to cut out all the rest of those little circles, but uh, I think they're so small, and I'd rather just cut all, clear all that out, and take the extra time. Maybe wear out my bit a little faster, but it's all right. Charge enough for your projects, you'll be okay. All right, so let's reset preview. Now I want to preview all the tool paths. I want to see what they all look like. So I'm right here. I'm going to do preview all tool paths. It shows me everything. When that comes out. That's going to be perfect. It's going to be great. So that was it. It doesn't take long to, to pop one of these in, especially when the work's already done for you when you go to Etsy and buy one. Uh, the only thing we have left to do 
is um, let's see. Well, let's let's go back. I'm gonna go up here. I'm just gonna show you time frames because everybody seems to want to know how long is that gonna take to cut. Well, I'm gonna go right here, and this is gonna give me my summary. And you can see, wow. So the cap holes right now, it's telling me it's gonna take six hours and 29 minutes. That is insane. So guess what, guys? We're gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can fix that. All right, so let's close out. So let me show you a little trick we're gonna do. We're gonna unclick, because I don't wanna see all these tool paths. We're gonna go back up here to the 2D view. I still have those selected. We're gonna go back to cap holes here and click on that. You see this big box right here? This means I can add more tools. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna select and we're gonna add a quarter inch. And we are going to select that. And that one's on top, which is perfect. We're gonna go into this edit right here while the quarter inch is selected. We go to edit and I double check up here. It does say it's a quarter inch. And like I said, we're in pine. I'm just gonna pump that up to 90 because it's gonna just rip right through it. And that's the feed rate. And a lot of people get into feeds and speeds and, and they think they're extremely important. They are important in a lot of projects. This is pine. This is just a quick cutout. It's not like we're working on a 3D project where those, those get a little more important. I mean, don't get me wrong. You don't want to pump this up to 300. It'll break something. I've broken bits before because I tried to push things too hard. But as you get to know your machine, you'll get to learn your feeds and speeds. They are important um, until you figure them out a little bit, then they aren't as important. So uh, I'm gonna click on my OK there. And now I have both of these. So the first thing it'll do is it'll want to do the quarter inch and then it'll prompt, the machine will run through that and then it'll prompt us to do the eighth inch end mill. So now that we have both of these, let's calculate and see what happens. It's thinking, it's telling me, yeah, we're gonna cut through the material and we know that, that's fine. And let's go ahead and reset our preview right here. And let's just do, I wanna preview these two. So let's preview selected tool paths. Cut them out just like I did before. Reset preview, let's, let's preview all. Cut them all out. Great, I'm gonna to go to close down here. And I want to see right here, we're gonna see if that cut out some time. It did, but not near enough. So I think it's time for another strategy. Let's try something else. See, we're getting to learn stuff today. That's what we want to do because there is no way this should be taking us two hours, three hours to cut out. It's, it's a total of four hours and 10 minutes. We might have to go the long way about this and, and just cut out the circles instead of removing all the waste in the middle. I was hoping we could get by with it. I don't want to spend that much time on this project. So we're going to go down here to close. Get rid of the tool pass. I'm going to click on right click on this one. And there's the delete button. Now I want to delete this tool path. See this one? Do the same thing. Drop down to delete. Delete this tool path. Okay. Let's, instead of, oh, we're going to go back up here. And we're going to click on 2D view. And I want to make sure all those circles are highlighted still. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to do a profile tool path. Profile tool path will cut out a circle in the middle. And I think that's the way we have to go. It's gonna be a little more work, but it'll be, it should be a lot faster. So I'm gonna click on this. Um, we still wanna go that same depth. I'm gonna go a little bit deeper. I'm gonna do 5.1. And we're gonna select a different tool right here. I think we're gonna stick with that eighth inch end mill. And select that. This is gonna take me nine passes still. I'm probably about right. Oh, we'll go to edit. I think we'll just bump it up to 80. And we, because we're cutting out these circles and caps are meant to fit inside of them, I think what we want to do is we want to cut in on the inside because if we cut on the outside, they're gonna to be too big. If we cut on the line, it's gonna to be too big. We need to be inside the line for this. And uh, direction, I don't care, I'm just gonna leave it as conventional. And I don't need to do a separate pass. Here's where the great debate comes in, is right here. Do we need to add tabs? 
I don't think so. I think I'm going to have to use the blue tape trick just to save time. And I'm just going to do it on the parts where the caps will be so they hold them down to the bed of my CNC machine. And if you don't know what that is, I'll show you later in the video because we're going to do we're going to do the cutout here with this. So let's go ahead and and uh, skip the tabs for now. And we're going to scroll down. We don't need to ramp in because it's just going to be spinning in a circle, and I don't want to make a make a mess of it. So we're going to change this name to Cap Holes, and we were using the one eighth end mill. Now right here, this would typically be a good time to use a compression bit. In my collection I don't have an eighth inch, currently don't have an eighth inch compression end mill, so we're going to go without it. We're just going to do a regular one eighth end mill. I'll, I'll use an upcut just so it sucks the dust out. And we're going to do calculate. And yep, we know. All right. So we're going to do, go over here and do reset preview. And we're just going to do preview selected tool path. And as you can see, it's just going to cut the outside. It's going to leave all the middle. Left all the middle in these. And those are pieces we'll have to, we would normally have to cut out if we had tabs. But because I'll hold them down with blue tape, it won't matter. All right. So I'm going to go here to close. And I'm going to go back here to the summary for the tool paths. We're going to check out how much faster that is. All right, so we were at 11 minutes to cut out the Minnesota part of the state one. And then for the cap holes, we are at 1 hour and 23 minutes. Now, one thing that we could do to change the time here, we could end up using maybe a 3 8 of an inch board, and that'll cut everything down. But I'm going to stick with the half inch. And we're going to see how things go from there. I know it's an hour and 23 minutes, but not a big deal. That I can work with. Four hours? I didn't want to work with that. Okay. So from here, we're back at the regular screen. And I am going to go to Save Toolpaths. And we're just going to save them both. My machine is the Onefinity. I'm in the US, so my brain only works in inches. And let's see, so we're just going to do save toolpaths. And I'm just going to create a new folder right here and call it the Infinity TP. And we'll open that puppy up, and I'm just going to hit save. Next stop will be the machine. Actually, it may not be the next stop. The next stop will probably be milling up some lumber and deciding if we're going to do half inch or three eighths. And if I switch to three eighths, I'll tell you, it's just everywhere I put one half an inch, we switch it all to three eighths inch. Not, not a problem. Um, if you need help with that, let me know. I can show you. Otherwise, we should be all set, and uh, I'll see you when we're milling up the lumber. All right.